I'm Michael Plant. I'm a research fellow in philosophy at the Wellbeing Research Centre, and I'm also the founder and director of the Happier Lives Institute. I basically try and ask the difficult questions which wellbeing scientists try and try and ignore. Uh, so I, I think about the nature of wellbeing. So what is it that really matters? Is it happiness or is it life satisfaction? And this is the kind of question which social scientists will go over quite quickly, whereas in philosophy we, we will really drill into these sorts of things and really understand the arguments and their implications. On the measurement of, of, of well-being, so can we, can we compare it? Is your seven the same as my seven? And then trying to understand what's going on there. So um, thinking about the, how we communicate, uh, how, how communicating in numbers is the same as communicating in, in words. We think, you know, if I say I have a perfect day or an okay day, you know what I mean but aren't we just doing the same thing if I say I have a 10 out of 10 day or a five out of 10 day? I'm starting to think about um, the, the importance of human well-being compared to other things or the importance of making people happier now compared to future generations. So how much weight should we give to helping people alive today compared to say, preventing humanity going extinct? And because we're uncertain about that, how do we deal with these, these difficult questions about moral uncertainty? If we're uncertain about, about what we ought to do, what ought we to do? So those are, those are questions on the, the kind of uh, big picture questions on the, uh, on the philosophy side. So in leading the Happier Lives Institute, uh, we're combining two quite simple ideas. So this idea of effective altruism, how can we do the most good we can? So doing good is good, doing more good is better. How can we have the biggest impact? And that's a question both for policymakers and also for philanthropists. So if you wanted to, to get out your checkbook and are asking the question, how can I most effectively um, make other people happier? What's the most effective way I can improve the lives of others? Well, well, what would you do? And we don't really have an answer to that question. So some people have been thinking about this, this idea of effective altruism. What's the, uh, how can we do the most good with our resources? But that, but that thinking hasn't yet been connected with the research which is happening here on people's well-being. So if you're trying to find the most effective ways to, to do good, but you're, but you're looking at well-being, do you get a different answer? If you're trying to, to help people alive today, one thing you might think is about the, the, the most uh, impactful action you could take would be um, if, you're, if you're donating your money, would be cash transfers to very poor people in, in say, sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, and this is a, so it's a well-known, it's a well-studied, it's a, it's a well-liked intervention and, and it's known to be effective. Uh, another intervention which is not known to be effective would be treating people's mental health. And if you're thinking, what's the most effective way to, to help people alive at the moment, like pe lots of people think, okay, we should alleviate those of, uh, we, should, we should alleviate poverty for those in extreme poverty, but few people would think, no, mental health is the priority. But in fact, some, some research we've done with uh, uh, some collaborators at the, at the University of Oxford is really doing a, like a really thorough deep dive on comparing these. So we looked at studies on cash transfers, we looked at studies on, on treating, uh, uh, treating mental health, uh, we looked at studies on, on treating depression, uh, both in low-income country contexts, and we find, amazingly enough, that treating depression is not just better, it's 10 times more cost-effective than cash transfers. So this turns ordinary thinking on its head. It's quite, a, it's quite a big deal. It shows that what we think makes lives better and actually what really does can be quite different, and that's why we need to, to do the research onto well-being to find out what those things are. The research we do at the Happy Lives Institute is to try and find the most cost-effective, evidence-based ways to improve global well-being. And uh, part of the reason we want to do this research is because what we think makes people happier and what really does are not the same thing. And that's why it's important to do the research to find out what the difference is. I see two frontiers in well-being science. One is on the, the methodology end. So we want to measure people's happiness. We think that matters, but people are suspicious that we can really do this in a sensible way. You know, it's like, it's subjective, but okay, how can we quantify it? How can we put it together? So I think there's, there's useful and important work to do to like really understand how do people communicate? How do they how do they use well-being scales? Can we really take the numbers at face value? Is you know is the difference between a seven and an eight uh, the same as between a five and a six? So can we can we really trust the data? I think we're making some some good progress on on understand what's going on in the hood and what we need to do to to work out if there are any problems to correct them if if, if they appear and so on. Uh, another bit of that is is being able to to use well-being data to uh, compare things like improving lives, saving lives. There's there are some, some additional uh, non-trivial philosophical difficulties in how in, in, in trying to, to do this. Well, the reason I think that the work on that methodology is important because what in the end I think we want to do is to find 
we, we want to improve people's well-being by as much as possible. Resources are limited. We want to do. We want to have the biggest impact we can. And so, to really understand how we can how we can take this information and then implement it to work out what we should do, I think that's the that's the other frontier. There's quite a lot of research which has happened on on the nature and uh, uh, the, the nature of well-being, its causes and correlates, what makes people happy. But what we don't know very much about is what are the very best ways to improve well-being. If you're uh, if you're a policymaker, if you're if you're a philanthropist, if you if you run an organisation, and you think, okay, well. What should I do? What are my priorities? We don't yet have answers to those questions, and I think we should. <laughs> and part of the research which uh, my organisation is doing is to try and move that frontier forward, so that we can have an answer to the question: um, what, what is the most effective way to uh, make other people happier?